done here, right? But it's, you know, my, my guess is, from my experience, is that if it's in a color, there's some type of statistical significance. So when you move from a gray to a red or a gray to a green, there's something happening behind the scenes where statistically it's a significant move, and it's worth paying attention to. Um, but I think everybody's agreeing no victory lap. But I, I'd be curious to see whether or not we're moving from left to right. Are we moving from the bottom two box into neutral? Um, that gives you some indication. Or you could have kind of some outliers over here, and we can move to the left, and that even be uh, worse. So I think we have to do some work on that. Well, so just to build on what you're saying, if you take a look at the trust, which is down just a little bit, trust. You know, uh, management cre and creates an environment of trust. How much do you agree? Only 21% agreed with this, okay? And that's essentially unchanged, okay? Which is borne up on the next one, which is management creates an environment of trust. How much has this changed over the past 12 months? Not a lot of movement. I would contrast that with a few, a little while later, where it talks about termination processes being fair and effective. And we moved considerably at that point right there. There was considerable movement there, so you know this is why you have to. This is why we're asking for the data. This is why we need to take time looking at the data to identify the specific issue. In my opinion, did it have open responses? Yes, it did. Yes, <coughs> yeah, we're gonna look at that. Yeah, we yeah, will get those. Those are being being looked at. Because yeah. so, I think that's the most kind of telling data. Yeah, this survey only closed last. It closed on Friday. Friday, I think. Friday. Yeah. So they gave. The, they sent, um, I mean, I sent this around as soon as we got it, which was yeah. what, Tuesday, maybe. Also, somebody said, I don't know if it was Ken or, or Rick, um, putting this on the website. When you say putting this on the website, are you talking about Board on Track, which we have access to, or the website where everyone has access to? Yeah, it's, it's on That's what I thought. Okay, so, and um, the open, once the comments have been redacted, <coughs> identifying information, that will also go on the on the website? The and documents, all the documents that Yeah, I, I just, I'm just making that clear because I know that was one of the faculty concerns. So now all documents that are shown at the board meeting that are in our board packets always show up on the website after. And, and just for so we redact so that we can post. Right. And we redact prior to showing it to the rest of the board just to select few redact so that. But that's actually why we don't have them right away because yeah. someone So the board, the board sees the redact data. Yeah. So. Right. But board then redacts. Make sure right. Correct. We, it's being redacted without. <laughs> we, we have an issue where the administration in Year, prior years have redacted potentially improperly or not been full transparency. I think because we just got these results, we have to, to digest and, as Ken suggests, really look and we'll set yeah. around the link so that everyone can look into these in more detail. Um, but I think that we do, we can certainly all acknowledge that we still have. Yeah. Pauline, could I make a suggestion going forward about this? Yeah. Which is, and I think we talked about this in January a little bit, but you know, ultimately, when we come back again to action planning, we've got to put some of our own targets out there. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You know, let, 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 let's pick a couple of these, like trust, mm -hmm. communication, a couple of these things that we know that we have to go after or are informed by uh, Jessica or Tom or faculty that says these are things that really matter. Let's pick some of those things. Let's really come up with some real action plans and let's put a target out there so when we come back, we're not excited about a 12 point. 12 percentage increase, we're saying, well, that falls short of our 20 percent increase right. that we we're expecting to say. Yeah. So and let's, these are, you know, we've done this a few times. I may get myself, we're not pushing about that. Like, it's just, it's just, you know, survey 101. We pick a few right. of these, put our targets out, get some real action plans going on, and, uh, and we'll, we'll measure our success based on that. I think it's a good idea, Mike. That is a very So actually what I was going to suggest then is that we put this on the agenda for next month and everybody can have a, a, a 10 minute discussion and we want to pick a, several of these um, big, what, you know, if we look at these summary things, because these will be the things that we measure and where, what we'd like to have as targets. Are you suggesting the underlying root cause issues? Yeah, I, I volunteer to 
help lead that if you want. Okay. To just figure I, it out. I think it would be more productive to pick one of the internal questions yeah, for yeah, targets rather than yeah. because yeah. there's. Okay. Yeah. 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 I mean, I, I, I know we moved to. I it's mean, a little I, more targeted. There's, there's a process to pick the questions, right? And it starts with the people who are being surveyed mm -hmm. and start to talk to them about what do you feel are most important that you need to work on, mm -hmm. and then bring that back at some agreement. I would actually you, suggest you Tom know. work with you on that. I'd love to work with Tom. Yeah. There you go. I already put you on. He's not even voted on yet. Oh. oh we'll, we'll do we'll, that. We'll, we'll do. We'll do, uh, <laughs> we'll do that yeah. after we have voted on it. <laughs> Plenty of time. But yes, the faculty rep, right? You're yes. Okay. I'll put Tom to so burn on. Make one comment also yes. During that you process. put Tom to burn on it too. Tom to burn. Oh, okay. <laughs> Both Tom's. Um, I think he's not here. When you look through the open response, it informs. <laughs> or will it help to pick the I, No, no, no. I, I, no doubt. Oh, that's okay. that, that, I'm not saying you don't. No, no, I'm just saying. I, 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 I think all these pieces come yeah. together to make sure that we're picking the right stuff. Absolutely. You're right. Yep. Yeah, good point. All right, thank you. <clears throat> So the uh, okay, so the family survey results. Uh, I know we looked at those the last time, uh, but the addition this time, I believe, involves the uh, uh, open response parts. Uh, and uh, I think you want me to open that? If you'd like to, yeah. I think you. Um, Yeah, so you can see these are some of these are the open response parts from the family survey. Uh, the general tenor seems to be, to me at least, uh, Rick. Rick, you can you obviously you have something to say here too, I think. But uh, um, uh, the there's a lot of uh, satisfaction or at least support for the academic environment, the teaching, uh, the high level of rigor. Uh, the opportunity for students, um, the commitment of uh, the students' teachers, and so on. Uh, again, they're, they're all individual responses, so um, that's my reading of the general tenor of them. Uh, uh, in terms of the, of the um, sort of color, if you will, of, of them. Um, so uh, I'm just trying to catch up. Okay. I, I had a question about these as I was reading them. It's a little different reading them here on the hard copy, but when I was reading them online, we had a there's we have a spreadsheet. Tabs. There's yeah. two tabs. Does that mean that there were only two open response questions on the family survey, or did we just kind of lump them all together? Uh, so okay. I think there were, the only two. there were only two. two. The, the first tab is the first question. The second tab is the second. Okay. I, I did actually take the survey. I just forgot that. Okay, yeah. thank yeah. you. I actually had a question, Rick. When you were redacting, there's a lot of um, the where there's blank space. Was that because you just redacted a whole section? No. I, if I redacted, I either I, I used like a star oh, or okay, something like that. It, it was clear where I redacted. So if it's blank space, it's just that's how it got imported. It got formatted. Yeah. yeah. So maybe that person didn't answer that question. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Rick, did you redact all names, or did you just just names, or something else that might be? I think you missed order. a few names. Well, you, yeah. you kept yeah. names in, okay. when they were in a positive context. I okay. think you left the administrators. But. Uh, yes, I, it was if it was identifying the individual who was a student, right? Maybe a student or the parent. parent. Oh. Okay. So those are just you just have a couple of things. No, this no, is this the whole thing. No, oh, yeah. the oh, there, this goes on and on. Yeah. 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 There, are so there, there are over 250 responses. Yeah, this will be. This will yeah. be. It's all I mean, literally can't go. I, I can scroll, but yeah. it's not going to be. No, I yeah. have like yeah. 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 248 comments. Yeah. For, for so. example, somebody might, might say, what is something that school is doing well? And, and you know, there could be a two word answer quality instruction. And so when you scroll through, you have to really take your time looking at the various answers. Uh, you know, intensive curriculum, challenging courses. I'm just reading off discipline, you know, one word. So you have to really kind of look at them slowly. So, so that's true. I mean, the, the, uh, the ones that we're getting on now, the second tab, it's clear that, you know, there are concerns around communication. This goes back to what uh, Liz was saying. Yeah, that's right. Communication is a theme. 
Uniform was a theme also. Yeah. Yeah. Was that what you said? Uniform, Uniform was a theme was throughout the whole. Well, so just to clarify, I think you know, you know, there's. I didn't hear anybody saying we should do away with the uniform. It was the <laughs> process. It was a process by which the uniform uh, policy was revised, um, and the perception that there was very little opportunity to provide input. And I think there were concerns, um, you know, particularly around the the, the cost uh, that came up a couple times. Yeah, and I think it's important to also remember that those things, those concerns were addressed uh, in terms of the cost. So we looked at a, a lower price point for, um, the, I know the PE uniform was the focus of some of those concerns as well. Well, so I, I, so I think the, the concerns around cost, the current concerns around cost at best could be said to be partially addressed, that you did make a, you know, it's fair to say that you made an attempt to find lower price point. I know there's still a large uh, population among the parents that are voicing concern over the expense of new uniforms, particularly, particularly so quickly in, in the first year. I think it's also important to remember that there's a phase-in period for the uniform so that you can use uniforms that have been used in the past, which also has an impact on the cost. I just got it. It was the whole process, the way it all went down. Kind of. That's how I kind of read it. It was a bunch of little different things, but just overall, it could have been done better. Kind of type of situation. That's kind of how I read it. So I'll just comment. I on the second tab in particular, I didn't do it for the first uh, because the second one was kind of. I don't want. I don't want to sound negative, but because it was around things that could improve, I coded the answer. I took a type of stab at coding. And I think the four top topics uh, were communication, but that broke, I broke it down into two. So the first was administration communication. Uh, the second was just general communication. So that could have been teachers, staff, or fact. Uh, fact it was just ambiguous. Uh, those were the top two, so communication. Uh, uniform was, I think, the third. And I think to your point, um, Scott, it, um, it was mostly around process. And I think the fourth was around concern for teacher attrition and retention. Those were the four big ones. Then there were a series of others. There was, there was quite a bit of on extracurricular activity, uh, a desire for that. Now, having said that, it's interesting. I also took another coded when they said communication has improved. And so many folks actually indicated communication has improved, but it could be that. Mm -hmm. There were a couple comments like, thanks for the newsletter or something like yeah. that. Mm -hmm. So yeah. there, there was definitely um, indication of positive trend. So did you, it was pretty significant. did you, what was the trend around uh, special education? Because I saw several yeah. mentions of that. It was, it was probably, uh, if you look at the top 10 categories, it's in the top 10. It is, it was probably around seven or eight. Yeah, but think about that though. Like, but it was in the tail. Yeah, but what percentage of AMSER is in that group? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Right. So yes, that There's can be, lot. that's skewed. You know what I'm saying? Well, so if, if I understand what Scott is saying, so few are in that population, relatively speaking, that if you get that many, that means a lot of that population are making comments. Correct. Correct. Right, yeah. Yeah. So it's in, the, it's in the top 10, definitely. Of, I only thought of like the top 10 categories because there were a lot of onesies and twosies kind of things. It was enough there to be worthy of holding for the you know coding because it's just happening relatively one of the things that stood out to me uh, I don't know if it was one comment or multiple comments but it had to do with the experiential learning outside of the classroom yeah. mm -hmm. and I think I had heard prior to the survey in being in different discussions where that had come up so that I don't know if that's something that we want to um, from an administration standpoint at least consider um, I guess it's something that we had before in some cases we don't have it now is that something that we also need to think about and give some consideration? I think that's so one of the big topics on the EdCom report. That would be a nice segue into our EdCom yeah. discussion <laughs> later on. Okay. And by, the, by the way, parenthetically, the Maynard schools, they just had a trip down to Cuba. Ah. So, okay, it was interesting. Yeah. In the newspaper. Okay. 
They brought back a ton of cigars. Ken's got some. <laughs> <laughs> Um, one of the, the, one, the, the uh, another comment I've heard, and I heard a couple of times on this, was that in some cases students are being left to learn on their own. Now I've heard that anecdotally from parents, and then it showed up a couple of times on the survey here. I, I don't really understand. Um, I guess I say, what does that mean? That there's no particular. Well, my children have some very good teachers. They also have had some not respectful students who don't teach. Very frustrating and stressful when a child has to come home and try to learn to work on their own. No, I mean, it's very vague. Yep. Um, but I, I've heard that a couple of times. Mm -hmm. so. So, so another theme at COVID was the frequency of where folks said there was inconsistency among teachers. I'm not saying that's true mm -hmm. or false. I'm just yeah. reporting on what it is. Right. Mm -hmm. And that was a pretty common. It was one of the top ten. It's probably around number six or seven. So inconsistency among teachers is a topic that came up in the top. Top, top one. So some saying really great, and then some saying, yeah. Very honest, great. Are there any other comments that people want to highlight? So when are we going to follow up with this? Are we I mean, we got to do something with this. We've got to have deadlines and follow-up and action plans, just like you said. We should, whatever we do, you know, with the parent, we all should do, should do with the teacher and do the same thing and have goals and set goals. On it. Pick a few items. Yeah. Set some targets. Yeah. Volunteer for that, too? No, sir. I will work on the faculty. Well, so, so I, okay. I'm sorry, go ahead. I was just going to comment. I think you will find the themes somewhat consistent. That is to say, I, I mean, I think if you see, well, I haven't, so I have not reviewed the faculty one, but some of the themes are very consistent. I think the approach needs to be consistent. So I think that, so, you know, from a practice standpoint, I think we should have two work streams that are talking and in alignment. So, but I, I, I think it's, be a mistake, I think, to commingle mm -hmm. and do that. I think there are different versions, different needs, mm -hmm. and so. Um, I will be so on the task force, but I won't lead it. For the family. The family one. And so somebody should work with Liz. It's yeah. going to be a task force, yeah. and we yeah. should all kind of yeah, that's fine. stay in lockstep. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know who needs that. And then we should get together. We should. Mm -hmm. Yep. Figure out if there are, if we, all, if we both have a communication action plan, we should figure out the different pieces. But we should, I don't think we should kill me all. So, so the one thing I would say is there's a, the, in my perspective, there's a great deal of alignment between the goals we set out for the year, both for the board as well as for the executive director, and what the issues are that have come up. Just saying. So, Liz and Scott will be on that task force mm -hmm. with this to come up with the same um, <coughs> the same concept of, of looking for targets, what it is that we want to measure and what we want to. I would suggest, suggest that we but meet together for the to start to start and then, and then we are not commingling, but yeah. at least yeah. to be on the same page. Yeah. Good approach. So, but it's some Parallel good. strategies. Yeah. yeah, I think it's a good idea. So, Scott, you were you were unable to lead that task. So, do we need a leader of the parent? Oh, so, Liz will lead. Yeah. 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 Good. Yeah. Before we sort of leave this data, um, what the first character, I just want to kind of highlight this. The first question is what characteristic of your child's school is the most helpful for his or her learning? And if you chucked all of this text into one of those world, word cloud generators, um, I think that the job that teachers are doing really comes out mm -hmm. strong and I, I just I just kind of want to leave with that I'm excited that this will appear on the website and um, you know some days teaching can be an uphill task and I, I hope that teachers look at these comments and see how really appreciated you are because there's a lot of parents out here um, who took this survey who took the time to write in there some some nice things about the jobs teachers are doing mm -hmm.
So, yeah, I would also agree with what Jess said about that characterization. Um, uh, the next part is uh, a report that uh, we put together, uh, a year-end report, if you will, about the special education overview. And uh, this is um, something that the special education administrators put together by looking at the, uh, the I think the, everybody has it. Who is Rick? Why don't we have to step out on the phone call? No, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, this, that's our contract for next year. Ev, take a look. Yeah, I don't know how to do it. Unless somebody has a word. I think you need to get out of it. I'll tap and see if you can get to the end. Oh, uh, it makes me nervous. We'll come back to it. Yeah. We're going to come back to it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't like clicking around, so I'm going to come back to that. Okay, mm -hmm. let's see. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, just one other thing I wanted to mention that uh, we've been working this year to uh, establish relationships with the community in a number of different ways. Uh, this falls to me in a large degree, but I've um, uh, been meeting with people in the Marlboro government, uh, among others, and uh, recently met again with the mayor, and we talked about ways in which the school could continue to meet with people in the larger school community and work on ways of sharing uh, our best practices. Uh, it's part of what charter schools are meant to do to help uh, show what they've found to be successful to other schools and, and attempt to help uh, spread those. Um, so to that end, we this year we had a, um, a first annual uh, educators exchange where we sent out invitations to all the educators in the surrounding cities and towns, as all the superintendents, the principals, and the teachers uh, to come to the school uh, and uh, uh, meet our department chairs, uh, view our classes, have lunch here, basically spend the day learning about uh, what we're doing and then learn from what they're doing. Uh, we, we got a, we didn't get a great response. We, we did have uh, one gentleman come who's the academic leader at uh, the um, uh, Assabet Valley uh, Regional Technical School. The others um, said they couldn't come this year, but we're gonna continue doing that. But when I was meeting with the mayor the other day, uh, he also, we, we talked about this among other things, and he mentioned that he's very interested in making sure that AMPS is uh, able to share uh, as much as possible with the other schools. And in fact, all the schools share. So he's t talking about getting together with the um, uh, administrators at the, um, at, in Marlboro, you know, the superintendent, there's a new superintendent starting, I think, this week, an interim superintendent. And then also meeting with people from uh, uh, the Espit Valley uh, Low Tech School and even some of the private schools in the area so that we can uh, share. The mayor's very happy that the Marlboro has a range of choices for people. He thinks it really adds a lot of strength to the city and he thinks it's a, something he wants to promote. So I just thought I'd mention that that's something we, we're looking forward to doing. Uh, I'll probably be meeting with um, some of these people even over the summer. Um, uh, another thing I thought I'd just mention is, the, is that recently one of our students was uh, honored uh, in Marlboro for his contributions to the community by volunteering at the Marlboro Library. And I, it was in the newspaper uh, just last couple days. Um, I'm trying to find his name, but I think I, I don't have the clipping here. Uh, is there some? I did. Uh, but the mayor brought this up. He said, yeah, we, we honored one of your uh, students the other day. Um, He's a high school student who's been working as a volunteer at the local library. And typically the uh, Youth Commission in Marlboro honors people for youth service. His name is Mahish Mahendakar. Mahendarkar. Uh, so anyway, I that, thought that's worth mentioning that uh, the city is, um, you know, through at least its representative, the mayor is happy with what AMSA is bringing to the city. 
and has been uh, interested in uh, recognizing our students. Um, yeah, that's it. So uh, we put this together, the special ed um, administrators put this together, and they looked at, uh, there were 63 IEP meetings this year, so they looked at those 63 IEP entries, and they went through a variety of categories to see uh, how the school was doing in this area. And as you can see at the top there, I don't know if we can make it smaller so you can see all of the comments there. Do you want to just see the comments? Well, no, I guess I could read them, but I guess the main points would be the two uh, columns to the, to the left. So where it says, consent, for example, consent forms received within five days of request. Uh, so consent, form, consent to evaluate forms were mailed within five days of receiving the request. Uh, the areas that I think are worth pointing out, well, I think all of them are important, but there were six late meetings. Uh, for test results reviewed within 45 days of consent. Uh, Can you explain what that is? You know, yeah. I, yeah. I did a so, lot of data here. We, I just think reading it all out. These are just timelines. Yeah, this timeline. is just a, this was a specific um, request uh, that was being addressed from last month. Yeah. Yeah, but as you scroll down, there's more. Like, so what do you mean late, six meetings late? Okay, so as I was, I'm explaining that there were six meetings that were late. Uh, the reason for this was that there was a change in administration in uh, fall, and there was also some problem. there were some problems or challenges with some of the, uh, one of the liaisons who's no longer with the school. So this is an attempt to show where, we're, uh, where we were not in compliance, the reason for it, and what we're looking to do in the future. Do you, so, mean, do you mean the test results were six of them were being late? There were six late meetings that involved test results. That did not so, happen so the test so results column, reviewed within 45 days of consent. So six of those meetings were late. Column A is the requirement. Yeah, so the law a. says that test results have to be reviewed within 45 days of consent. Exactly. Out of 63 oh, IEP oh, meetings, yeah. oh, six yeah. of them were late, yeah. and here's why. And here's the, the reason why. Okay. So Who, who's the meeting with? The, 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 meeting, the meeting is with the special education administrators, uh, and in some cases with teachers who are involved as well. In some cases, guidance counselors. So this is just an attempt to give you an overview, because there were, con there were some concerns expressed about the compliance with the special education department. So in response to that, we went back and looked at the 63 IEP meetings, and we went through and found the number of places where there is room for improvement. So for example, as just pointed out, there's 63 meetings, uh, but there were six meetings that were late that related to the test results being reviewed within 45 days of the consent. The reason for that was that there was an administrative change, rather abrupt, from the previous administration of special education in very early fall. And we dealt with that by hiring new people. In one case, there was a change again with the employee because there was a problem with these late meetings. So there was an attempt to identify and then correct that problem. The general pattern is that when there were late meetings, if you look at uh, number seven, the new IEP developed by the annual review date, there were 13 meetings that were late. Uh, eight were due to the administrative change. In other words, in between the time that one administration left and the new one got traction, there was some late meetings. Uh, five were due to snowstorms or parent or AMSA request to reschedule. In some cases, the rescheduling put us out past the, the date that we had targeted and then the meeting was late. So it's, the breakdown is eight due to administrative change, five due to various other causes, either weather or parents, or, or AMSA rescheduling. 
number eight, the category is new IEP provided within 10 days of the IEP meeting. Five IEPs were mailed beyond 10 days, which would, which would make them late. Uh, and again, the abrupt administrative change and the inaction of a former liaison who was, who was transitioned out in the fall. Um, so uh, the rest of the categories are all in compliance and they involve sending out progress reports, the proper way to treat students who are older, uh, parental notice of procedural safeguards, and then autism checklist and bullying uh, uh, compliance reviewed at every team meeting. So what the people did, uh, specifically Ms. Houston and Ms. Pasternak who worked closely in special education coordination, they reviewed all the 63 IEPs and this is the result of their, of their study or their survey. So I think in terms of what we can do to improve, uh, we're going to have training over the summer available for our special education staff to improve their ability to use data in writing their reports. That's something that we're signing up for. For example, number 14, uh, progress reports provide measurable data. We're going to have staff uh, have training on providing data for benchmarks on progress reports. Uh, in some cases, in the cases of the very top there where the meetings were late, those problems have been rectified by changes in staff and those problems occurred for, in very large degree in the fall when that transition was still going on. So I guess the overall takeaway that I took away from it after reviewing this with the staff is that yes, there were issues of compliance in the fall but that there's been steady progress and that there, where there's room to improve, we're looking at two things, instituting training and then also uh, improving on staff coming into the next school year, which we're working on over the summer. Could you explain a little bit more about what you mean by, so I assume you're, you're saying you want to hire staff, so you're, in, you're looking at staff. Yes, whether, whether that means changing the roles of some people, uh, where we think there would be a better alignment or better fit, or in some cases, adding addition. Okay. Dr. Clary, were you aware that these were late and if not, or so do you have controls in place now to be able to monitor that? So that if we start to go sideways again, that you'll, you'll be able to know? Yeah, I think uh, to answer your first question, I was aware that when the administrative changes were happening in the fall that some meetings were, uh, notifications weren't being made in a timely fashion. And so when we realized that part of that was due, at least part of that was due to some of the staffing, then we moved to try to make changes in the staffing. But of course that didn't happen overnight. I mean, we had to identify where we had a problem and then work to get somebody better in that position. Um, when we started out the school year, uh, the previous administrator who was, had oversight for special education had um, himself had a challenge because a number of his staff didn't return, but they let him know that very late in August, uh, actually the day before teachers returned. And so as a result, he hired some folks from uh, a temporary agency to fill that gap and it was uh, at least two of those people that ended up eventually being transitioned out, actually more than two. And we've got permanent people to replace them that we think are doing a better job. And so do you, that's so do you, do you feel you have the right controls in place now to just know, like you suddenly, yes. you, you find out we're 10 days later, you just, you just you yes. have the right control? Yes, part of that has to do with the particular personnel that are scheduling the meetings. Uh, I think uh, probably uh, there's one position for uh, an assistant and then there's one uh, probably half time more position. Uh, I'm not absolutely sure. Uh, total? Um, I don't know off the top of my head. Including all the paras? 
Yeah, if you include all the Paris, um, I don't know, it's probably, I don't know, I couldn't give you an accurate number. spreadsheet we've been talking about has been passed on to the task force. Specifically, things like the um, uh, recently, I think, it came to some of our attention that there were questions around what sort of support, for example, uh, an AMSA email address and things like that that we're going to be. Are you all addressing that as well? Yes, part of the um, CPAC uh, and understanding really how they operate and what support they provide from an outside perspective will absolutely be, uh, you know part of what we're going to do as the task force and we are aware of everything that's uh, been of concern uh, to this idea with email. Of course, there is, um, you know, again, we're doing some fact finding, but there is, there is the organization of CPAC itself has a very important role and so addressing how that works within the uh, connection with AMSA, who's responsible for uh, you know, setting up the email um, and funding it. These are other aspects to what we're looking at, and that will obviously kind of come in hand in hand with uh, part with the compliance, but secondly, how do we move forward to make sure that um, CPAC is assisting us in a meaningful way and we're assisting them? Uh, and then, of course, that goes to the outreach recommendation to the school for that second piece of attracting specialized kids and then the retention. 
Yeah, there have been a number of things that have been done by the special education department to assist CPAC this year, which could form part of the information that would help out with that task force. I know that uh, when I talked with uh, um, Ms. Houston and Ms. Pasternak, they, they had provided a number of uh, areas where uh, they have been assisting with the CPAC, and uh, one of them involved uh, paying for the dues for CPAC to be a member of the Massachusetts PAC, the over the sort of statewide organization, uh, printing materials for the workshops, uh, workshop on basic rights, uh, which uh, was made available to anyone who was interested, um, setting up and posting agendas for the CPAC meetings and so forth. So there has been some, um, uh, I think, a good amount of help given there, but. Um, it's certainly something that I think we can explore in the, with the task force. I know that both Ms. Houston and Ms. Pasternak are interested in doing that and contributing to it. I would just repeat what I said in the last uh, meeting that if, uh, there's a, a, an offering of basic rights workshop which, taught, uh, which informs special education parents about what their basic rights are. I think that's a good thing for us board members. I've attended the workshop three times. I think every time I attend one, I learn new things, or maybe I hear new things. Curious as to whether uh, I'm sure we're continuing to, to be vigilant on that. Have we found other cases this year as a result of the uh, lottery process that the, this, this trend has continued? There have been other cases where, uh, in the school's judgment, people have been trying to what they call game the system for uh, claiming residency in one of the core towns when they don't, in fact, reside there legitimately. So. I think part of the benefit of having held people accountable this year uh, has been that um, it sort of served as a, a notice, I think, really, that the school won't um, will look closely at uh, the applicants to make sure that they're they're really abiding by the spirit of the law. When I talked with the Department of Education about this in the fall, they they. Um, confirmed very strongly that that was our that was our responsibility to make sure that the spirit of the law is um, observed and so we went forward um, making uh, calls and bringing people in that, um, it, as needed in some cases where we thought that that had been a problem and, and I think this year it's been a continuing challenge but we've gotten ahead of it in a sense so that uh, 
Uh, we don't even, you know, when people are at the application process and we look closely at their residency status and we find anything that looks irregular, we've gotten in touch with them so that it really hasn't gotten beyond that. And I think as we go forward, it's, we're going to see that that's, that's going to have a beneficial effect on, on the, for everybody, really. But it's certainly the school's responsibility to make sure that, that, that people don't take advantage of it. it, it it's something that the Department of Ed uh, said it was sort of a backhanded compliment to the school in a way that people are trying to get into it so much that they want to find a way to uh, misrepresent their residency, but it still presents a challenge. So, Ev, can I just, so the, the complaint was from somebody who, can you just re refresh, the complaint was somebody who said that we're letting somebody in without doing due diligence, or somebody who was not let in, or no, somebody? No, the, the, com the complaint was one where we have a student who is presently enrolled in APSA, and then administratively it was determined that that particular student or family didn't meet the criteria for being able to enroll in AMSA from a residency standpoint. And so AMSA so asked that person to leave, mm -hmm. and then that person filed a complaint. Yes. And so the board has investigated the procedures used throughout the process and has determined that, 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 the, that the school has done what it should have done. Yes, but not so much the board as much as the individual went directly to DEES. Okay. So they elevated okay. the next level, and DEES came back their written report. That said the, the school did what it should have done. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So with that clarification, we can, I can entertain a motion to accept this complaint. Okay, Chris. Okay, and we need to, to do this by roll call vote. Yes. 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 the update on the what is the update on the one that you and Allison are doing we have met with that person already and we're going um, forward with the investigation so. okay all right so the next topic is um, trustee elections we have three people who are up for uh, election for their second term and that would be Allison and Tom and myself we all joined about the same time and our terms end in next week So is this just to be a trustees? Just to the board, it's not an officer Correct. thing. It's okay. just, um, for our second terms. And how long are your terms? Three years. Three years. Three years. Three years. Okay, sorry, thanks. Yeah, it's right there on the board. Oh, I see, 319. Yeah, she's from July 1st, 2016 until June 3rd, 2019. So are you ready for motion? Yes, I think that's good. So I'd like to propose that we nominate for Allison, uh, Pauline, and Tom um, to their respective positions that they're currently holding today for the uh, next three years for the remainder of their terms. We have to do them individually. Oh, that's right. <laughs> we may elect only some. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, so, so the very first one that would be Allison, okay, that she be renominated or she be nominated to uh, continue <laughs> on her term uh, for the next uh, three years, July 16, uh, July 2016 through June 2019. Have, have we confirmed that she wants it? Allison or 
Okay. And roll call vote there. Vote thank you. 